The paint bucket tool can flood fill areas of your canvas. There are two fill modes in the properties bar. By default, the second mode is selected. This is fill cell mode, which detects differences in color and uses those differences to limit the color fill to a specific boundary. With the paint bucket tool selected, I'll choose a red color and ensure that the tolerance is set to 32. Then on the circle lines layer, I'll fill those shapes. You may notice that when I try to fill the top right circle, the paint floods outside the shape. That's because the circle is not closed like the other shapes, so the paint has a way to escape its boundary. In addition to filling cells or closed shapes, the paint bucket tool can also fill the entire layer, but it only works on the canvas layer. This layer has two X shapes drawn on it. In the properties bar, let's click on the fill image mode. Now if we click anywhere on the canvas layer, the fill will replace the content on that layer. For comparison, I'll undo and select the fill cell mode and then fill the canvas. As you can see, the paint flows around the X shapes rather than covering them. Let's explore some of the other paint bucket properties. Let's look at fill. Right now, fill is set to current color. To the right is a color swatch you can click on to choose a color to fill with using the universal color picker. You can also use the paint bucket tool to fill selections. I'll select the rectangular selection tool and I'll draw a box. I can use the paint bucket tool to fill inside that selection. In addition to filling with a solid color, we can also fill with a texture, a gradient, a pattern, or a weave. I'll choose gradient and then fill the selection with one of the presets called orange flame. Now let's explore what the tolerance property can do. I'm going to change the fill from gradient to current color, and let's keep using red. Right now, tolerance is set to its default at 32. I'll select the gradient layer, and if I click on the white end of the gradient, you can see that a very small range of white and light gray values have been selected. The adjacent darker gray values are different enough that they don't meet the tolerance threshold and are therefore recognized as the fill boundary. If I decrease the tolerance setting, then I'm going to select an even smaller range of gray values. And if I increase the tolerance setting to 64, then I'll select a larger range of gray values that are adjacent to each other. Tolerance can range from 0 to 255, which coincides with the number of hue, saturation, or brightness values. For example, this gradient has 255 different shades of grayscale in it. So if I fill with a tolerance of 128, half of this gradient will be filled. If I fill with a tolerance of 255, then the entire gradient is filled. While tolerance selects the range of colors that are affected by the paint bucket, the feather property allows you to feather the edges of that selection. I'll reset the paint bucket tool, choose current color for the fill, and select red. Then I'll choose a tolerance of 1% and set the feather to 128. If I click on the white end of the gradient, the fill starts out opaque and then fades to transparency at about the center of the gradient. So if the tolerance is only selecting 1% of the values in this gradient, then the feathering has added 128 additional values to the selected range while gradually reducing the opacity of each individual value until reaching full transparency. If I increase the feather to 256, the selection range is expanded to include the entire gradient and the fill fades out as it reaches black. The final paint bucket property is anti-alias. If you are filling line art, you'll want to leave this enabled because it will do a better job of making your paint fill all the way to the edge of your lines. Let's revert the template and reset the paint bucket tool to put feathering back to 0%. Next, fill inside the cells of the circle with and without anti-aliasing enabled. If you zoom in closely and look at the edges where the fill meets the lines, you can see that all the red pixels go right up against the black pixels in the example with anti-aliasing enabled. Where I had disabled anti-aliasing, you can see the red doesn't go all the way to the edge. It leaves a little bit of a gap between the colors. That's known as aliasing, so anti-aliasing is getting rid of that effect to give you a much cleaner fill result. This particular line has a very hard edge, but if I undo and make that line much softer by going to Effects, Focus, Soften, I can apply 9% softening, and that will feather the edge of the lines. Now, if I fill the line art with my paint bucket tool, you can see it's more difficult to get that paint to fill right to the line, even with anti-aliasing enabled. I can adjust the tolerance and feathering to try to compensate for that softer edge, 
I'll set the feathering to 16%, and then I'm able to bring the fill closer to the edge of that line. However, it creates kind of a messy edge, which might not be the effect that you want. So the paint bucket tool does have some limitations. We can overcome some of these problems by separating our line art from our fill color using layers. In the long run, line art is easier to color if your lines are on a separate layer above the layer you are applying color to. First, I'll go to File, Revert to reset my template. Then I'm going to click on the layer named Color Fill. In this technique, I've drawn my lines on a separate layer using the scratch board. I'll select Pens, Smooth, and then paint a fill boundary along the inner edge of that shape using my fill color. Then I can reset the paint bucket and use it to fill in the rest of the shape. There are two important things to remember when you fill line art this way. First, you wanna make sure that the brushes you were drawing and coloring with are 100% opaque with a hard edge. The smooth pen or scratch board are great choices for this style of drawing. The second thing to remember when filling line art this way is to be sure not to leave any gaps in your fill boundary or the paint will flood outside of the line art. Using a medium sized brush allows you to vary your pen pressure to get into tight areas with lighter pressure and cover larger areas with heavy pressure. You can also use your eraser tool to clean up any areas where you painted beyond the edge. A basic shape like a circle is very easy to fill this way, but it gets more tedious when you color sharp objects with very sharp points and a lot of detail. If your paint floods outside of your line art, undo, then hide your line art to look closely for any small gaps in the fill boundary. Close the gaps in the boundary and then try to fill it again. If the fill works properly, you've just saved yourself a lot of time because coloring the center isn't efficient, nor is it even necessary. The edge is really the most important part to get right. For clean, professional looking artwork, we want the edge of the fill to be right beneath the lines, not going outside of them or leaving a gap. You might question why I do it this way rather than filling the line art with the paint bucket on a single layer. There are several reasons why this is a bad idea. First, if we fill on a single layer, it creates a rough edge where the color fill eats into your line work. If you zoom in and compare the line quality of both techniques, you can see that where the lines are separate from the fill, it looks much cleaner. The second reason not to fill on the same layer as your lines is that the paint bucket does not always correctly detect the edges of the lines, leaving small gaps in the artwork. It takes more effort to look for those gaps and correct them than it does to just create the fill boundary yourself. The third reason to keep your lines separate from your color is that your color layer can be easily changed to a different color or used as a stencil to add shading. You don't have as much flexibility to modify the lines or fills if they are combined on a single layer. I can go to Effects, Tonal Control, Adjust Colors, and then I can shift the hue and the value without affecting the color of the line art. As long as my color fills are on separate layers, I can change each of those colors independently. There are more advantages to keeping your layers separate from each other, but we will be discussing those a little bit later in this course. When you are filling selections, toning the canvas, or filling a background, it may be more convenient to use the fill command rather than the paint bucket. Fill can be found in the edit menu, or you can use the keyboard shortcut of control F. Let's disable preserve transparency so that it doesn't trip us up later.